Have you ever wanted to communicate with someone without writing a letter or waiting forever for it to be delivered? Well, we have the perfect solution. It's called the Snellograph that was created by Samuel F. B. Morse in 1837. What is a telegraph? A telegraph is a machine used to improve communication over a wide range of areas. And how does the telegraph work? A telegraph works by transmitting signals over wires. A telegraph has both a transmitter and a receiver. Wires connect the transmitter and receiver. The transmitter includes a portal, which has a model type with built-in dots and dashes. The type can be moved through a mechanism in a manner where dots and dashes will make or break the contact between the battery and the wires of the receiver. The receiver marked dots and dashes on an unwinding strip of paper which passed under the stylus which turns on and off by signals to the transmit. So Morse code was what they used on how to translate the letters on the telegraph. Once the people who controlled the telegraph would get the letters, they would translate it into actual letters from the alphabet so the person who needs to get the letter will understand it. <coughs> And this is a blueprint on how the telegraph was going to be made. And this is a 3D model of the telegraph. Yes. Benefits of the and was, <laughs> and was the telegraph expensive? Initially, yes, the cost to send a message was expensive, so being able to send one was not a common luxury. But over time, however, the price did drop, and the delivery of the messages became more stable as advancements were made on the machine. Benefits of the telegraph are quicker communication and information could be passed on cross-country, making it quicker than a letter or a newspaper. Any questions? James? Were there any other people trying to create this invention? Uh, yes, there were a few other people, but um, Samuel F. Morris is one of the most like, well-known people. Daniel? Why did you create the telegraph? The telegraph was like one of the like most important like inventions during that during the 1837. Oh, because it, like, it improved yeah. communication yeah. because like letters would take way too long. Thomas John. Was there any setbacks during the when you created the telegraph? Yeah, some of the setbacks were creating the Morse code because it's kind of confusing with the dots and dashes, but we eventually got it. Anyone else? Okay. I know you said it was originally expensive, but so you had like a so like at that time it was $2.70 which would have been like $70 for like our price so that would have been like a lot of money just to send like a message. Any other questions? Thank you for this opportunity. Vanessa and Raph, and we have a question for you. Um, have you ever needed a simple invention that you could type letters, books, or even launch jobs? Well, listen closely because we have the perfect gadget for you. Introducing the typewriter. Um, all right, so why we chose a typewriter. So we chose a typewriter because it was a very important invention during the historic time. So um, it was actually designed for visual and hearing impairments. And it also allowed women to launch jobs, which we'll get into that more deeper um, later in the presentation. Um, this works by, you press a letter, um, you choose a letter and you dial it, and a lever or a key you pull, and it will print. And that's a picture of it over here. Um, so, which area of life did this invention improve? So, the typewriter is the simplest yet efficient way to communicate on paper. And the advantage of this very typewriter was it had a lighter touch, faster and steady typing, creates clear and easy to read documents, and prints multiple copies using carpet. So that's how it's used. We're going to also get into pictures and like blueprints more deeper. Hmm. So the history behind the typewriter was that the typewriter was popular from the mid-1800s to 1980s. The inventor of this typewriter was Henry Mill. He created the first typewriter so the blind could be able to write. He wanted to put himself in their shoes and how they would want to type. 
1868, he released the first typewriter during that time. Throughout history, people, especially women, used this to create their own business and launch them. That's great Now tell us. All right. Um, okay. Well, let's So here is a blueprint that Henry Mo designed himself, and Ralph will tell you um, other designs as well. Uh, here are the designs of the typewriter and some pictures of it. All right, so how will this impact the lives of people? So the typewriter has an impact um, for different reasons. One is because women can make money and launch jobs. And I said this later before um, the presentation first started. Um, back then, they weren't allowed to vote or like own properties. So using this, they could launch their own jobs and make money themselves um, without the help of anyone else. Um, it's also famous for writing books or like important emails, such as The Adventures of, um, Adventures of Tom Sawyer. And it was originally written by a type with a typewriter, but then it revolved and it was handwritten into a book. Um, and it also helped us renovate into what is now computers with screens. We could print them now, and there's built-in keyboards. Uh, some challenges that the typewriter faced were the keys were mechanically slow to respond, and it frequently jammed. And if we try to like type pretty fast, the mechanical system like, wouldn't respond. And, uh, some additional fact uh, information: the typewriter were um, large and cumbersome, resembling the shape of a, of a piano. All Do frogs actually use typewriters? No. no. Yeah. Do you do you see the typewriter like evolving from what it is now? Yes. Yeah. Because if you look at the computers, there's screens now, built-in keyboards, and you can actually search the web. Um, Alright, well thank you for listening. Sharks, um, isn't it such a hassle to hand make all of your clothing, which takes days? Well, you're in luck. With our invention, a sewing machine, your clothing will feel better, look better, ma uh, made better, and just better. Um, you go from uh, days of hard work to just hours of convenience. Um, your clothes will be made 20 times faster and better. And is, um, what is it? The sewing machine is used to stitch material like clothing. To stitch, it makes a loop over the fabric and tightens up. The evolution of the sewing machine. In, in 1790, Thomas Saint invented the first operational sewing machine. It was designed to sew leather. Later in 1830, a French man named Barthemy Thiemer invented the first practical sewing machine. Why we chose the sewing machine? We chose the sewing machine because it will, it will help mass produce clothing in the long run. The sewing machine will make a large impact in the textile industry by making clothing cheaper or more durable and much easier to make. Here's some pictures of the sewing machine. 
originally. Um, here is um, women uh, sewing before the sewing machine with scissors and yarn, and so normally take days to weeks. You guys have any questions? Yeah. Um, would there be, um, why would the sewing machine give better quality than any other invention? Because, like, the sewing, the sewing machine, it made, like, sewing things much more practical. So when, when you hand stitch things, we're human, we're imperfect. But a machine, it does things faster, better, and, like, more precise. Like, how much faster? Like, how fast would it make be, like, to sew, like, the shirt you're wearing com by hand as compared to the sewing machine? Like, the first models, it would be, like, four to five times faster. Okay. But in later models, uh, it would be, like, 20 times faster. Excellent, excellent. Yeah. How much did the um, early models cost? So, so, so originally, like back then, it would cost about $100, which is like two $2,724 in today's money. Okay. Do you want to the same question? Um, how do you plan to fix any errors in the sewing machine with the money we give you? Well, we really like um, our guy, tell us how. Um, they got a guy. He made, he like, he fixed like any imperfections already with the sewing machine. Like, imperfections. So, it's, so it's flawless? So imperfections mean like jamming. But it jams like flawless. So how would you fix that? Probably like go over the sign, the, the design, like make the, what is it, the like bowy, like won't jam. Make sure everything is smooth. Well, look, it's a machine, so I'm sure it, they all jam at times, but I'm sure they, before they sent this out to the market, right, that, you know, it's, it's reliable, a, an acceptable percentage of the time, I would think. Um, how do you guys come up with the design of it and the structure? Good question. Well, we're, we're just the sales pitch guys. <laughs> Our guy Thomas Saint made the design. Any other questions? Well, thank you. Alright, so we made a steamboat. So, hello sharks. We're Daniel. James. And Thomas. So, do you have problems getting from one land to another land? Do you have to uh, swim? Do you have to purchase an expensive ticket for something else? Don't worry, we got you. We created the steamboat. So I'll let Jimmy take it away. The steamboat is a transportation device to get from one side of land to another side of land over shore. It is primarily powered by the steam engine and the thing that powers it is wood and coal heated up with hot water. And then with that, you can stir around, you can steer wherever you want. This is the steam engine. This is um, the layout, you know, the blueprint, one of the blueprints, one of many. Um, we, got the, we got the tugboat, we got the, you know, what the things are made of, the bowl, the hull, uh, the main deck, the hatch. Just the breakdown of all the parts, you know? This is like the actual this you know, is the above view floor plan. Of the decks and everything. Another picture of our citizen you know, going on the steamboat, testing it out. Another picture of our steamboat. And another picture. Door. To so the painting, so you be asking yourselves, why do we create this? So me, Jimmy, and Thomas, and our buddy Robert Fulton, rest his soul, um, we were working with steam locomotives, you know, and we had the idea, you know, why don't we just, since everything is steam engine here, why don't we make a steam engine boat, you know? So we had the idea, put some things together, uh, we tested the steam engine with uh, the boat to see if it worked. And then we created a 45-foot-long steamboat to hold the end. Uh, when we finished making our steamboat, 
The sail down the Delaware River as the, the members of the Constitutional uh, Convention watched. Yeah. You might ask, why did we build the seaboat? We built the seaboat because, you know, traveling through the sea this is not that uh, easy. Uh, so we made this new innovation that will make traveling through the sea quicker and more efficient. And the steamboat can also become affordable for common people. This will re 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 revolutionize the future of sea transportation. Now, uh, you may be asking yourself, is it affordable, is it expensive? So, steamboat rides in the 1800s cost around 25 cents to two dollars. That's around uh, six dollars and 12 cents modern day, all the way to 48 dollars and 96 cents. So, uh, it, it's pretty affordable depending on your, uh, you know, your class. Um, now, you might also be asking yourself, is it dangerous? Is it safe? Um, while we while we were testing it, you know, there were some concerning issues like. Uh, it was getting clogged by the muddy water, uh, there was boiler explosions because we are using it a lot, and then also some of our designs weren't the best, so there was a few weaknesses that we didn't see. So those were the issues, but with your money, we can fix that. Alright, thank you. Questions? Um, how far does, can Steamboat travel at most? Like, can it go across the sea? It could keep going because if you just have a lot of coal and wood, you could just keep putting it in there and it'll keep getting cleaned up a lot of water. Did you answer your question? For the most part, yes. Okay. Um, Caitlin. How many people can ride on the average steamboat? Um, probably somewhere around 50 to 100. So it's like a modern day ferry. Well, it would be. If you want to call it that, yeah. Mr. D, um, what other uses are there for the steamboat besides just transporting people? We can transport things, you know. We can transport food. We can transport, you know, we can import and export things that we need for our nation, you know. Uh, well, why would I do that? I have a perfectly good wagon right here. Why would I need a steamboat? Because you can't, you can't bring your wagon across the water. You can bring a steamboat across the water. Especially if there's not a bridge built yet. Yeah. yeah. Any more questions? Okay. Um, can you speak more on your um, deceased inventor? Robert Fulton? Robert Fulton. Like, it's, a touchy, it's a touchy gave, subject. It's a touchy him, subject. I think I'd, what gave him the idea? I think I'd rather not. I think I'd rather not. What gave him the idea? Um, like we said, sea transportation isn't easy. So, he had the idea to make it easier by creating the steamboat. Question, because maybe I missed this. So, Robert Fulton. So there was a steam engine, and then someone put it on the boat. No, we were we were we were working with steam locomotives. Right. So then, what 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 did Robert Fulton invent here? Like what? Because it's like you said, there's a steam engine, and they put it on locomotives. They put he it on ships. He, didn't he put it on. Steam engine. He put it on the boat. Okay. Yeah. yeah. He was the one who figured out. Hey. He made it be able to flow and move with the propeller. Gotcha. Yeah. Do steam boats ever have like two decks? Yes, they can have. No, that's Thomas. Yeah, they can have like three decks. Like in our layout shows, there was three different layers. Yeah, I think there was in some of the pictures. Did that answer your question? Yeah. All right. A a more. Can it take cargo? Of yes, course. Can. You know, we have a lot of space on here. We can take cargo, we can take people, we can take animals. Uh, Depending on the size, we can carry more or less. Brianna? Um, is this similar to the, uh, to the Titanic? And what means by the Titanic? What is it? Like, titan what is titanic? The titanic? Like, does it? How does it export people? Like, how does it bring them? I'm saying, what is it? What is a Titanic? He's trying to oh, say. I think he's trying to say you're like 60 years before the Titanic, or 80 years before the Titanic. That was a not quite. Oh, she's from the. Um, if you're worried, if you're worried about people's safety, with the right rules and regulations, you know, we're gonna be okay with that. With your money, with the investors, you know, we're gonna make seats. You know, we're gonna make it. Comfortable, you know, safe. So along those lines, like so the uh, a ship, maybe in the future, I had this dream, like called the Titanic. It went like across the ocean. Are steamboats designed to go across the ocean? Or are they more kind of like rivers or kind of more local stuff? It's more local stuff, you know, short distances. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Any more questions? Yeah. Um, how do you 
but it will be fixed in the future. Oh. Any more questions? Upgrade our shipping. Any more questions? No? Thank you. Thank you for your time and the software.